Hello curious learners, this is Mr. Buffington and in this lesson we are solving for that pesky variable x and we're going to do it with one step equations involving decimals. You'll need to know how to solve equations with addition and subtraction which are in the previous two lessons to be able to do this. So we're going to solve addition and subtraction one step equations that involve decimals. So first off, let's talk about what types of decimals you are going to see. You will see positive decimals like 15.23. You will see negative decimals, negative 5.023. Or really small decimals like 0 0.00034. These are all examples of the different types of decimals that you're going to see throughout this lesson. So now that we know what types of decimals we're going to see, it's time to actually solve for our variable of x. We're going to follow three steps for solving the equations. These are our three steps. We are going to find our variable, ask what happened to our variable or what is connected to our variable, and then do the inverse operation on both sides. You might have seen these steps before because they're the same steps we've used and they're the same steps that we will continue to use as we solve all the equations. It's really important that we become very, very good at using these steps. Let's do it. Here's our first equation with a couple of variables or with one variable and a couple of numbers that have decimals. X minus 3.2 is equal to 8.5. What's our variable? X. X is the variable there. It's the letter inside of the equation. What happened to X or what's connected to it? Minus 3.2. The inverse operation would be the opposite operation or in other words adding 3.2 and to keep it balanced we need to do that to both sides of our equation. So it's going to look like this. X minus 3.2 plus 3.2. Those will cancel each other out, leaving us with x by itself on the left side of the, the equal sign. Then we have 8.5 plus 3.2. When you're adding decimals, you'll follow all the same rules for adding positive and negative numbers. The only difference is that you make sure to line up the decimal and fill in any blanks that, that there are there with the number 0. In this case, there's no blank spaces, so we're just going to line up the decimals and add. 8.5 plus 3.2 gives us 11.7. That's our value for x. Whenever we're solving an equation, we need to check our work. So I've got the equation over here on the left, and I'm going to check by substituting x equals 11.7 into our original equation. Does 11.7 minus 3.2 equal 8.5? Yes, it does. So again, we line up the decimals and subtract like normal. 7 minus 2 is 5. 11 minus 3 is 8. 8.5. And we're able to solve that. That is the solution to this equation. Yay! If we check our work and it's the same on the left and the right of the equal sign, we know we've done our work correct before we even submit it. So we're going to practice this work. To practice, I'm going to give you another question. I'll have the steps listed on the left here. But I want you to go ahead and solve this one. x plus 0 0.6 is equal to negative 1.2. You've got the steps list listed there. Go ahead and solve it. Now I'm going to give you the full solution to this equation. Our variable is x. What happened to it? We're adding 0 0.6. So to do the inverse of that, I need to subtract 0 0.6 from both sides of the equation. That'll look like this. I have x plus 0 0.6 minus 0 0.6 on the left side of the e equation. The plus 0 0.6 and minus 0 0.6 cancel each other out. So I'm left with x by itself on the left. On the right, I have negative 1.2 minus 0 0.6, which gives me negative 1.8. My work is not yet done. First, I need to check. Is that correct? So to check my work, I'm going to take my answer of x equals one point, negative 1 1.8. I'm going to substitute it back into the original equation for x. Does negative 1.8 plus 0 0.6 equal negative 1.2? 
Yes, it does. So now I know that my solution is negative 1.8. That's the correct solution. We get a big old green check mark for that one. Nicely done. Time to move into a little bit of a harder question. I'm going to leave the steps over here on the left for you. I want you to go ahead and solve this one. It's a little bit tougher. We have x minus 3.8 is equal to negative 0 0.04. Make sure that you line up the decimals and be very careful when you are working with numbers that have two decimal places instead of one decimal place. Welcome back. How did it go solving this one? It was a little bit harder working with those negatives and decimals and variables and equations, all of that stuff. Let's see how you did. First, we need to find our variable x. It's right there. That's the letter inside the equation. We ask ourselves what happened? Well, we subtracted 3.8. So we are going to do the inverse or the opposite to both sides of the equation. We are going to add 3.8 to the left side of the equation and 3.8 to the right side of the equation. Notice on the right side of the equation, I have lined up my decimals 0.04 and 3.8. I didn't line up the numbers, I lined up the decimals and that's what you have to do when you're adding decimals. So instead of thinking of this as 3.8, we would think of it as 3.80 or 3.80 and that will help us when we need to join them together because 3.80 and negative 0.04 gives us 3.76. See, 76 kind of looks funny in there, unless you remember it's 3.80, not 3.8. The most common mistake is then when we're joining those together, we forget to line up the decimal. So I wanted to emphasize that. All right, I've solved it for the solution of x equals 3.76. Now it's time to check my work. Does the original equation, x minus 3.8 equals 0.04, when I plug 3.76 or 3.76 in there and I subtract 3.8, does that give me negative 0.04? Yeah, it does. Because 76 minus 80 is 4, negative 4. You see how those numbers work together. We need to, again, remember that working with decimals is a little bit different than working with other numbers because sometimes we have to add in those extra zeros as place fillers. But we did a great job on this one. We got the correct answer, which is great. Now, we're going to look at subtracting negative decimals. This is when we combine together the hardest parts of adding integers and subtracting integers. Subtracting negatives are always tough. And we throw in those decimals on top of it. This question might be a little bit of a challenge. So pause the recording, do your very best, write it out in your notebook, and make sure to check your own work because that's what I'm going to do when we come back. All right, here we are. Find our variable x. What happened? Minus negative 7.1. What is the inverse or the opposite of minus negative? Plus negative. The, the sign negative 7.1 remains the same, but the operation that's happening to it, subtraction, changes into the inverse operation of addition. So on both sides of this equation, I'm going to add negative 7.1. I did kind of a poor job lining up the decimals there. Um, over here, probably should shift just a little bit over so that the decimals line up. When the signs are a positive 13.8 and negative 7.1, the signs are different. We're going to subtract. It's the same thing as saying 13.8 minus 7.1. 8 minus 1 is 7, and 13 minus 7 equals 6. So we've solved that our final answer is x is equal to positive 6.7. Now let's check our work. Here it is. We're going to take our equation, plug the value of 6.7 into there. Is 6.7 minus negative 7.1 equal to positive 13.8? Whenever I see that minus negative, I always immediately change it into a plus. Minus negative is a plus. 
taking away something negative is a positive. Think about it that way. If you take away negative money, you're adding money. If we take away a negative number, we are adding a positive number. So is 6.7 plus 7.1 equal to 13.8? Yes, absolutely it is. And that's how we can check our solution. And no, x in this case is equal to 6.7. Great job. Here's the last question of the day. I'm going to load it up there for you. It's got some negatives. It's got some adding. I'm going to leave that up there. Go ahead and solve it. Come back for your full explained solution. Our variable is x. What's happening to x? We are adding negative 0.56. So the inverse of that would be to subtract negative 0.56. And like I said before, when you have that minus negative, you can change it into adding. So instead of saying we're subtracting negative 0.56, we can just say we're adding 0.56. And that might make our lives a little bit easier. So here we are adding it to both sides of the equation. Negative 0 0.56 plus 0 0.56 gives us x by itself on the left side of that equation. And negative 9.7 plus 0 0.56 gives us negative 9.14. Remember, we've got to think about that as 9.70 minus 56. And that leaves us with 14. Otherwise, it kind of looks funny. So we have to remember that. So let's shift that over here for our answer, and let's plug that into the original equation and check our work. Is nine, negative 9.14 plus negative 0 0.56 equal to negative 9.7? Well, if 14 plus 56 is equal to 70, then our solution is correct. And that is absolutely right. So that proves that our work was correct, which is wonderful, and leads to the conclusion of our lesson. Just remember a couple of things. One, follow those rules. Practice, practice, practice. Follow those rules, and no matter how complicated the equations get, you're going to be able to follow those steps and solve them. Number two is to always check your work. You'll notice that I do it. I've been doing math for a long time, but I check my work, and I encourage you to do the same thing. Hope that was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.